USA Patriot Act allows for searches of medical and financial records, computer and telephone conversations, and even for the books you take out of the library. But most of the people we spoke to say they're willing to give up some liberties to fight terrorism. Maybe that's a good thing. It's definitely sad, but it's, it has to be done. Yes, something needed to be done. These are the good people who make up Peace Fresno, a community group in Fresno, California. Unlike the rest of us, they've received an early lesson in what the Patriot Act is all about. Each week, they meet to discuss matters of peace. They sit around, they share stories, they eat cookies. Some have more than one. This is Aaron Stokes, a member of Peace Fresno. The other members liked him. He had come to the meetings, he went with us we go out on Friday nights and stand on a very busy corner in Fresno. And he had gone with us, he had handed out flyers. He went with us in June to a WTO protest. Then one day, Aaron didn't show up to the meeting. My friend Dan and I were reading the Sunday newspaper. And when I picked up the paper, in the local section, Aaron's picture caught my eye. The article said that a sheriff's deputy had been killed. And I saw it had a name that wasn't the right name. It said that he was a member of the sheriff's anti-terrorism unit. That's right. The photo of the man in the newspaper was not the Aaron Stokes they had come to know. He was actually Deputy Aaron Kilner, and he had infiltrated their group. Sheriff Pierce made it very clear that, yes, in fact, Aaron Kilner was assigned to infiltrate Peace Fresno, that he was able to infiltrate organizations that are open to the public. You could understand why the police needed to spy on a group like Peace Fresno. Just look at them. A gathering of terrorists, if I ever saw one. 8th of February, 1990. London Greenpeace meeting tonight. There's been a few new people in recent months who don't seem genuine. Who are they? Assignment number L11389. As instructed, I left the office at 7 p.m. on the above date and traveled to the office of subject group. Pressing the bell push label Greenpeace resulted in the door being opened by a woman of oriental extraction. I introduced myself with a fictitious name. She did not ask for any other details and she appeared not to be much interested in my background. This guy turned up at the meetings who didn't quite seem to sort of, you know, fit in. He didn't really say that much about what his politics were. But at the time we just sort of thought, well, you know, Maybe he's a policeman, but we're not doing anything wrong or illegal or anything, so, well, why worry about it? I knew that Helen suspected that there were some kind of infiltrators in the group. Um, and I said, don't be stupid, that's just something which, you know, you read about in books. My role was actually to notice everything that was happening, where it was being held, described the, the place that it was being held in, the people who were there, what they were wearing, what their names were, and everything that was said, and in particular everything that was said in relation to McDonald's. One of the spies, Alan Clare, stole letters, broke into the office to take photographs, um, followed people home. We were infiltrated for about 18 months by seven different spies uh, from two different agencies. McDonald's hadn't told them about being two firms and so they were spying on each other some of the time. And um, at some meetings there were as many spies as there were campaigners. I was asked to introduce another person into the group. Her name was Michelle Hooker and I believe she was an ex-policewoman. I was quite surprised when she came along for the first time because I thought I had to sort of dress down and wear sandals and sort of hippie type clothes, you know. But um, she used to drive up in a black BMW. She used to give me a lift in it. And she got very heavily involved with the group. You know, she organised meetings, she organised pickets. She even had a six-month relationship with somebody in the group 
and stayed with his family over Christmas. I managed to find, in a drawer, bank statements for London Greenpeace. They bank with the cooperative bank Islington. Went on to the Molten Hop public house. While here, the conversation turned to Dave Morris, and I learned that he lives in Tottenham. He has a son who is called Charlie, and he was born... One of them uh, wanted to get my address, and he sent, he asked someone in the group what, was, what my address was because he wanted to send me some baby clothes for my son Charlie. And he actually sent these clothes to me, uh, which, which Charlie wore. It wasn't until several years later that we found out the real reason that they wanted our home addresses. 21st of September 1990. Five of us in the group have received libel writs over the What's Wrong with McDonald's leaflets. 